and the beat goes on. So now we have to talk about the differences between day trading, swing trading, and investing. An investment is a day trade gone bad. Yeah, <laughs> generally. The only reason I'm still in the limelight networks, and as much as I want to believe that stock is going to go to 10 bucks sometime in the year 2011, and it's on my takeover possibility list. Um, also, let me talk about another another couple of stocks that I was dead wrong about. Hearn and S. And S. I said in 2010, those would probably get taken over. Those were my, on my takeover list. We didn't lose money on the stocks. They basically did nothing all year. But I thought maybe uh, Sprint Next would get taken over. And uh, this company, Hearn Consulting, would get taken over sometime in 2010. Didn't happen. But Limelight's going to be on my 2011 list for takeover candidates. Now, as I was saying, day trading, swing trading, and investing. As much as I want to believe in Limelight Networks, if you think about it, I bought the stock originally when it broke 5 bucks. Then it went to like 6 7 Percentage-wise, that's an investment mind-blowing return in the short amount of time. Then of course I sold calls against it and the stock blew up over close to nine. But because I had those calls written against it, I couldn't um, enjoy the profit that the stock should have reaped me that day. So then I was in it for the duration. Now, do I look at this day as a negative day? Of course I do. We have the greatest market rally we've had in a long, long time. And my stock is getting slapped around. And again, if you just entered that stock, you are pissed as all hell. Thinking, what the hell is this asshole on the internet for? And of course, I could have given you 150 winners over the last two years. But of course, it only matters what I've done for you lately. And I, I can appreciate that because that's the mentality of the stock market. That's the mentality of America. That's the mentality of us all, like it or not. Of course, if you look at your bottom line and you're still profitable for the year, you're not as angry as you are. And if you had bought the Limelight Networks when I first suggested you bought the Limelight Networks, maybe you'd be in a better position. But I was pounding and screaming and hollering about how I like the stock still going into 2011. Now, we need to know why the stock is down today. You got an answer? You have an answer? I don't have an answer for you. And nobody will have an answer. When a stock acts poorly, as we know it as relative weakness, there's usually something going on somewhere. Maybe some Joe wants to be out of the stock. Maybe somebody just wants to take some profits, but maybe there's something internally going on. And then we look at the SEC filings that the, the insiders dumped 23,000 shares of the stock, right? Ooh, scary. 23,000 shares of a $7 stock for an insider really isn't a lot of stock isn't a lot of money. Maybe he wants to buy some cool Christmas presents. You never know. But it does tend to frighten people out and that kind of thing. Um, but my main concern right now is a stock being down 5% on a blow up massive day like this. And don't call it a rally. Rallies are when the stock market opens up relatively <sighs> flat, bless you, and rallies building on momentum, not gapping up and sitting there for 80% of the day. Don't call it a rally. It pisses me off, all right? Don't. But uh, what, I, what I'm here to talk to you about is that um, as self-important douchebaggery that I do bring, all I'm going to do now is talk about how stupid I am, all right? Will that, will that make you feel better? And the, the, the genre and the, 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 the crux, the nexus the, 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 uh, what I'm trying to say is the meat of the, of the reason that you want to hang out with me on a daily basis is, bro, I'm telling you, it's these situations. Now, I could save us all. If you're in Limelight Networks, all I have to do is sell the stock and just give up on it right now. And, you know, the stock will be gapping up to 750 tomorrow on some, some bullshit news. Or sell... 10 extra calls. So I own 2,000 shares right now, and I only have 10 calls written against it. If I go out to, let's say, January and sell 20 calls, so therefore being naked 10 calls, guaranteed the money. Now, here's the situation, what I'm going to do. I'm going to call the company tomorrow and see if they take my call, first of all. I'm going to ask why he sold his shares. Maybe he has a reason for us. He can give us any reason. We don't know. 
But I'm also gonna tell him about my situation. And if he wants his company to prosper, to pay me off. I will tell him all the scenarios and I'll, I'll fly out to wherever Limelight Networks is headquartered and I'll show him all the instances over the last 15 years how whatever I do dictates on the direction of the stock market. In particular, stocks that got taken, taken over a week after I've given up on them. Stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not going to even ask for a lot of money. 100 k $100,000 so a guy like this means nothing. Give me $100,000, I'll sell my 2,000 shares, and your stock will go to 15, 20 bucks. And in the long run, you will be much more profitable and that 100K will be nothing. It means something to me, means nothing to you. But listen, if you don't give me my money, 100K, in unmarked $20, $50, and $100 bill increments, I'm never going to sell your stock. Your stock's going to go to zero and your company's going to go out of business. So, Mr. Limelight or whatever the hell your name is, I'm going to call you tomorrow and see if you want to take my, my th these are my terms. These are my terms. And then I'm going to start blackmailing other companies because what I'm going to do to Apple is after selling, after owning the stock at, I don't know, cost average of four cents, I probably own that stock when the, iP when the iPods first came out, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy Apple stock back at $315 and I'm going to call Steve Jobs and I'm going to tell him, listen, if you don't give me a million dollars cash, I'm never going to sell your stock and your stock's going to go back down to 80 bucks in the next couple of weeks. And the funny thing is, watch it happen. But you know what I'm trying to say, right? So, that's it. I have the worst stock. I mean, there you can't be worse than owning Limelight Networks right now. There's nothing worse at all. And sooner or later, I'm going to have zero vested in the market. Zero. No mutual funds, nothing. Not a share, not a sold put, not a long, not a short, nothing. Because there was one trade today. One trade obeyed my laws of trading. It was Netflix. Gapped up about buck and a half. Reversed at, one, it was a reversal at 207.80. 207.80 was a short, and now the stock is at 201. Six point trade. You don't own anything. You don't care about Netflix. You don't care about the gap up, the gap down. You don't care about racism. You don't care about the future of America and if you're going to be living here. And you don't care about your kids or my kids or anything. You made seven points or six points. You cashed out. That's a nice day. And that's where we have to go back to. Those are the days where I have to go back to where I could just sit back now, count my money, and not care about what happens overnight. Don't care about banks failing. Don't care about the manipulation. Just suck out whatever I can out of this manipulated garbage market and move on. Those are, and people wonder, what the hell do I do for money nowadays? I did pretty well based on just trading in and out of reversals for two and a half years. Pivot point reversals, swing trading reversals. All I ever did was reversals. I had a few circumstances that the trades worked 85% of the time, and that was all I did. And when did it go wrong for me? Was when I thought I was smart enough to know what a company was gonna do a year or two down the road, like Lucent. Yeah, thinking that I knew more than what the company was telling me. Because all you know is what the company tells you, and you know you can't trust the companies, Rhino. All right. So that's that. And I just, I realized the SEC is watching. And I, if T3 guys are watching, it's not always, it's not, I never, I, I don't always go off the deep end like this. This is my love mug. I'm drinking the love mug again. I love you all. So after I make some money, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some plastic surgery to Get rid of these rolls in my skull. What are those? I look like one of those Sharpay dogs. I am one ugly dude, right? Jeez, I shouldn't come this close to the camera probably because you're really getting exposed. The bags under my eyes. I'm all flushed. I'm all discolored. Just, just a, what a mutt I am. I would much prefer Krull.